Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel sponsored by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a super cute ice cream scrubby designed for the scrubby summer of treats for Red Heart. This is my very own design and it's a lot of fun to make. It's something just a little bit whimsical to make with the really cool scrubby yarn. Now in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the different steps of the ice cream cone using a Red Heart soft yarn, which is just a plain worsted weight yarn. And then I will show you how the pieces look once they're all put together in the scrubby yarn. I want you to be able to see how the pieces are constructed and I think it's easier to do that with the soft yarn. Did I mention this is a free pattern over at redheart.com? It totally is. All you need to do is click on that link right down there in the video notes and while you're down there smash that like button as my kids say. After you have your pattern gather some materials watch this video along with me and let's make this really cute scrubby together okay? Go ahead and go do that I'll meet you right back here. In this video, as I mentioned, I'm using the Red Heart Soft Yarn, which you can see is a smooth worsted weight yarn. I'm using also a size I or a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. The reason I'm using the soft yarn to demonstrate these stitches is just that. I want to be able to demonstrate the stitches for you. And I feel like it's easier for you to see what I'm doing if I'm using the soft yarn. If you're going to make the actual scrubby, use that scrubby yarn. It's a lot of fun to work with. Don't be scared. There's also several videos I've done right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel telling you, teaching you really, how to use the scrubby yarn. All right, let's jump in. The first thing we're going to do is make a cone and you make two of these cones. The reason I decided to have it where you make two of them is because once you make two of them, you'll sew the two pieces together and it makes it just a little bit thicker. So a little bit more ice cream like. So for the cone, we're going to start off with a slip knot on our hook and then chain four stitches. Three, four. Now we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So I yarn over my hook skip one, two, three, and in the fourth chain, I'm going to do a double crochet. So there is my double crochet. Now I chain three, one, whoops, two, three. I'm gonna turn my work, and then I'm gonna do three double crochets into the double crochet that I had just created. So I'm going to do three double crochets. There's one, two, and three. Now I'm going to chain three, turn my work, double crochet in the next two double crochets. So you'll notice in the pattern it tells you that this initial chain three here does not count as a stitch. So I'm working my double crochet right into that first double crochet. I'm going to work the next one into the next double crochet. And now I need to do two double crochets in the same double crochet here at the end. So this is where I will do an increase, okay? So I've increased at the end of my row. Once I do that, I continue on repeating row three until I have the number of stitches stated in the pattern. For this particular pattern, that would be nine double crochets. So to repeat row three, I would chain three and turn. I'll put a double crochet in each double crochet to the end of this row and at the last stitch I will do two double crochets into this last stitch here. So I will do one and two. Again that allows me to have this increase. So I'll repeat row three one more time. So I would chain three, turn, Work a double crochet in each stitch to the last stitch of this row and work two double crochets. Again, I will repeat this until I get a total of nine double crochets. Once I get nine double crochets, I will fasten off my work and then I'll make a second cone and I'll show you what that looks like right after this. Once you have the two parts of the cone complete, they'll look something like this. You can see here that both cones are identical. So it will be as simple as just laying one piece on top of the next one, and then we would go and whip stitch all the way along to join the two. You can see it gives it a nice substantial thickness, and I think it was just enough, even with the scrubby yarn, that it will still dry at a normal rate and it won't get that really kind of sick, 
uh, sour smell of the scrubby, and but it just gives you a little something to hold on to as you have the rest of this, the ice cream cone. Now, the rest of the ice cream cone. Each part of the ice cream cone is made separately and then sewn on to each other. So let's walk through how to make each step of the ice cream cone. When I designed the ice cream cone, I wanted it to look like the ice cream was kind of melting over. It was heaping on top of the cone. So I wanted to make sure that I had a really nice scallop edge along the chain edge of the ice cream cone. So the base edge begins with the chain 14. So I've placed a slip knot on my hook and I'm chaining 14 stitches. Now I'm going to have to stop here in just a minute and count my stitches. As I'm going along, you'll notice that as I go up two or three stitches, um, I will move my thumb up and I will rest it real nice and flat on the firmness of the yarn. I find that really handy too when I'm working with the scrubby yarn. It helps me maintain a nice straight stitch of the yarn. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have one extra here. I'll undo that one stitch. Now as you're working with the scrubby yarn, it will be a little bit difficult to go back and count your stitches. There are some tips and tricks that I offer in the learn to crochet with scrubby yarn video. I'll put a link to it right there on the screen. But if you go and look at that, that will help you to learn some uh, really quick ways to be able to work into the scrubby. For this, we can very easily see our chain stitches. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to single crochet into the second chain from hook. And remember, you will never count the loop on your hook as as a chain. Oh, here comes my yarn ball going right towards me. Hopefully it won't be a problem throughout the entire part of the lesson. So I single crochet in the second chain from hook. I'm going to skip the next chain and I'm going to shell in the next chain. Now looking at the instructions, you can see that a shell for these uh, for this particular pattern is a combination of five double crochets all into one stitch. So there's two double crochets and I'm going all into the same chain. There's three, here's four, and then here's five. So that's five double crochets all into the same stitch and that creates my shell. Once again, this I thought this really looked like it was melting uh, ice cream over top of the cone. I thought it looked really cool. So once you do your first shell, you will skip the next chain and single crochet in the next one. So right here I can see this next chain kind of gets hidden away as these stitches fill up the space. So as you're working with the scrubby yarn, you want to be very careful that you don't accidentally skip more chains than you need to. Then we're going to repeat. We're going to skip this chain and put a shell into this chain. Now, as I'm making the shell, I want to offer a little tidbit of advice. If you're one of those people that tends to lose stitches all the time um, when you're working into the chain stitches, one thing you can do is purposefully chain more stitches than what the pattern requires. And then if you accidentally skip a chain here or there towards the end, but you finish off at the very end of your project, you know, nobody will ever know. Or if maybe you don't accidentally um, skip a chain and you just end up with those extra chains you created, just uh, pluck them out, undo them from the opposite end and you're back to normal. It's a great way to make sure that you are able to actually get to the end of your project with all of the stitches that you need without having to rip out and start over because it's hard to see where the chain stitches actually are in the pattern. And that works not only for scrubby yarn, but for all yarns. Now, as I've been talking to you, you can see I've just been working along. I've been working my repeat. And um, so I did my second shell. I skipped a chain. I did a single crochet. I skipped a chain. I'm doing five double crochets into the next chain, which is a shell. I'm going to skip a chain. And in the last chain, I will do my single crochet. You see how that works? So that's how I get that really nice kind of scalloped edge. All right. So now I'm going to turn my work and I am going to work along the opposite side of this foundation chain that I just worked into. And when I turn my work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet into the single crochet I just finished. So it's right there. I can see there's a loop. So I'm going to single crochet right there to the single crochet I just finished. I am going to single crochet in the skipped chain. Now here's something cool. I don't have to work into the actual chain. I can work into that whole space right there. So that space that's open, I'm just going to single crochet right there. I'll single crochet into the base of the shell. 
single crochet into the skipped chain on next to the shell. And again, I'm going into the space, single crochet into the single crochet, single crochet into the space or to the skip chain, single crochet into the shell, single crochet into the space, single crochet into the single crochet, single into the skipped shell or skip chain, single crochet into the shell, single crochet into the skip chain or space, and then single crochet into the single crochet right down here at the very end. You see how that works? So now I have my nice scallop already completed and I can begin working my ice cream cone right here. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. For row two, we're gonna work along this straight edge. So we're gonna leave those scallops alone. We'll chain two and this does not count as a stitch. So we are going to then turn our work and we will do a half double crochet into the first stitch. So in this stitch right here, we will do a half double crochet and we're gonna do another one. We have to do two of them right there. So there is my second half double crochet. And then we're gonna half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end. Now, as I'm working along with these half double crochets, I'm gonna mention that the reason I decided to work into the skipped chain space instead of just the skipped chain is one, it's easier. Two, when, I was, when you're working with the scrubby yarn, it actually makes it super easy just to work into the skip chain space um, because your stitches, they don't disappear or anything because you have the shell um, surrounding that chain space. So it becomes really easy just to work into that space and it looks awesome. So whenever you can have a chance to make things a little bit easier for yourself by working into the space instead of the actual chain stitch, Go ahead and do it. It makes things just so much easier. So I'm at the end of the row and I have my 14 half double crochets. And when I repeat my row three, that's what I'll get to my 15, okay? So row three is just like row two. So I started off with my chain two. I'm going to put two half double crochets into this first stitch. And then I will half double crochet all the way to the end of this row when I will, where I will end up with 15 half double crochets. At the end of the row, when I have 15 half double crochets, I will go ahead and fasten off my work and begin the next level, the next scoop of my ice cream cone. I wonder what color I'll choose this time. All right, so I finished my first scoop. What am I gonna do for my second scoop? Well, I decided to go ahead and grab this really pretty berry color. And the cool part about the second scoop is it's made very similar to the first scoop, although we're gonna make it just a little bit wider because, you know, maybe when you were making those scoops of ice cream, you decided, ah, oh, I want a little bit more of this particular flavor. So I decided that for this one, I'm gonna chain 16 instead of 14. And the biggest difference here at the beginning is that we're gonna have two single crochets at the end of either side of the scoop. So I'm gonna move along here and get my 16 chains. Let me count to make sure. I have my 16 chains and I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a single crochet in the second chain from hook, just like before. And I will put a single crochet in the next chain from, or the next chain over, okay? Now I jump into our pattern just like we had done before. I'll skip one chain and I'm gonna put a shell into the next chain. Go ahead, get to the end of this row to the last two stitches where you will put two single crochets and let's take a look at our, look at our work. When you get to the end of your work, you should have something like this. So you have your three shells once again. You will turn your work, chain one, and just like we did before, we will work on the back side of the foundation chain working a stitch into each one of the chains. And remember, sometimes the chain is one that was actually skipped, and sometimes there's a chain that there was it was worked with all of the shells. Once you get to the end of this row, you know what to do on the next row. It's very similar to the first scoop. So I'm gonna finish this, uh, I, this, once you get to the end of this row, you'll know exactly what to do on the next couple rows, because it's just like the first scoop. I'm gonna finish this second scoop and move on to the third, which is a little bit different from the first two, and I can't wait to choose my final color. All right, so I finished my second scoop and it's time to start the third. Let's take a look. 
As you can see here, I started off with a pretty white color and the third scoop begins just like the second scoop. So I've worked the entire first row and the second row is where things go a little bit different, rows two through six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chain two and once again, working along the straight edge here, I'm gonna turn my work. Now I need to do a half double crochet two together. So I yarn over my hook, go into this first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have five loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through all five stitches. So that's a half double crochet two together. Now I'm going to half double crochet to the last two stitches and I'll do another half double crochet two together. What I'm doing is I'm beginning to shape the top of my cone. You know how you uh, scoop out the really yummy ice cream and it becomes a really nice, beautiful cone shape at the top. Um, that's what I am doing by doing these half double crochets. It's actually bringing stitches together and I'll get a really great shaped look. Now I'm almost to the end of this row and I'm gonna show you how to do a half double crochet uh, two together once again. So I'm at my last two stitches, yarn over my hook, Go into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. I have five loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through all five loops. Now I go ahead and I can chain two and turn my work. I continue on doing rows three, four, five, and six in the same manner, then I fasten off and we move on to the next step. What ice cream is complete without a cherry on top? To make the cherry, it's super easy. You're gonna go ahead and grab your cherry colored yarn. Obviously, I'm using some pretty orange color here. And I am going to put a slip knot onto my hook and I'm going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna to join to the first chain I created with a slip stitch, so that creates a ring. So I have a, a nice little ring there with my chain four. In that ring, I'm going to do 10 single crochet. So I will chain one, and then I will do 10 single crochet all into the ring. So one, two, three, four. As I continue on, just uh, a little note between you and I, if you are working along and you decide that 10 single crochet just isn't enough and you wanna do a couple more, you absolutely can. You can make this cherry as big as you want it to be. Once you're to the end of the cherry, all you're going to do is join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet and finish off. So the cherry is literally just a little circle, okay? Now it looks a little big right here because I'm using this straight or this really smooth yarn, but when you have this worked up with the cherry scrubby yarn, you, this will all be filled in and you can't even see. Now that we've completed all of the parts of our code, it's time to assemble. So let's take a look at how that works. Okay, I have all the parts of my ice cream cone right here. You can see here, here is our first scoop, our second scoop, and our third scoop. Here are the two parts of my ice cream cone, and here's my cherry. What I'm going to do is, simple, is as simple as this. I would take the cone, and I would lie one piece on top of the other, and then sew the cone completely up, okay? So once the cone is complete, you can then move along and come over here to your scoops, and you'll have the first scoop right here, right? And you'll sew that scoop directly onto the cone. Let's take a look here. So what I did is I made the scallop edges overlap the cone. So you can see here, if I just lay the cone or lay the scoop right on top of the cone, with the scallop overlapping the cone, I can use my uh, darning needle and just whip stitch these two pieces together. Remember, we are using scrubby yarn for this project, so it will be invisible. Once you whip those stitches together, your first scoop will then be attached to your cone and it's time to join the second scoop. So you'll take your second scoop and once again, making sure that the scallops are laying on top so that they overlap, you lay it on top and you will whip stitch the cone to, or not the cone, the second scoop to the first scoop. So then you have a scoop like that. See how it's three dimensional? Last but not least, you'll take the third scoop Lay it on top with the scallops overlapping yet again. And sew the third scoop to the second scoop. 
And once that's done, your cone looks like some, a little something like this. After you do that, you'll take your cherry and you can place it directly on top, to the side, wherever you want it, and you'll sew that into place. Now the last thing you can add, which is totally optional, is a stem for the cherry, which also is a great way to have a little uh, hanging bit to your scrubbies. So you can hang it on your uh, sink or in your bathtub. To do that, all you would do is once all the pieces are sewn together, what I like to do is I would grab a, a spare piece of yarn, so whatever yarn I might have, and I would just attach with a slip stitch to my third scoop. And then once it's attached, do a multiple of chains, however many you feel like you need to have a nice size stem. Come back down, join that there, and then you have a really great stem. See, it's really easy to create this project, right? Let me show you one that I have been messing around with out of the actual scrubby yarn. So as I push this out of the way and pull this one in, you can see I've already sewn together the, um, the scoops. And I sewed them together before I put it on the cone because I wanted to see if I liked the way they looked first. So I, here's my first scoop, here's my second scoop, and on this one for my third scoop, I changed it up a little bit. And I wanted it to look like it was kind of drizzled. So when I did a single crochet, I chained three, and then did a single crochet in the next chain, chain three, single crochet in the next chain. So I single crocheted along the whole edge, but I did chain threes to create this kind of cool kind of uh, drippy pico kind of look. I don't know, it's a variation. Have fun with these projects, they are a lot of fun. Once I did that, when I came and worked along the opposite end of the foundation row, I finished off the exact same way I did the other third scoop. So I thought that was something fun to do. So you can see here, it's a nice variation of um, a way to just mess around with these little scoop things. Get this really great texture, not only from the yarn, but from the actual stitches on the front. And it's just a lot of fun to make. Okay, now you know how to make an ice cream scrubby. Hopefully you'll run out, get some yarn, and make this really cute, cute scrubby for you, uh, or maybe for somebody who has a sweet tooth in your life. This is a really fun project, and it is uh, a super, it's super fun to make. I hope that if you do make it, you will share with me over on the Marley Bird Facebook page. It's a lot of fun over there. I would love to see what it is you're making, so don't be shy. Come and show me what you've made by watching these videos. Speaking of videos, make sure you hit subscribe so that you're up to date whenever there's a new video released and you will never fall behind learning right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video, you guys, and you'll come back for more. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Talk to you later. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed making this owl baby hat and you will run out, grab your yarn and hook, and get started on your very own. I hope you enjoyed.